time we have the ability to speak to the Lord is a blessing. It is a blessing to us. That's what we were created for. We are a vessel which you live in. So I thank you for allowing me that blessing. Of if you open up your Bibles tonight to Ezekiel chapter 1, we're going to start in verse 15. Amen. Somebody love the Lord in here. That's right. That's exactly That's what right. It's about. It's about love. Y'all let God do something for us tonight, man. Yeah, we're waiting for everybody to get there. It's not a book we're in now. <laughs> Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 15. That's where we start. I'm sorry. I thought I was loud. I was trying to speak out of mine. You talk up, man. Verse 1. I mean, verse, chapter 1, verse 15. That may be what I threw everybody out with. What we're reading here is a vision, which most of you probably already know. If you read the book, you know that this is something the Lord opened up to Ezekiel. But we also know that it's twofold. Anything that's in the flesh, God can manifest into the Spirit. Anything that's in the Spirit, He can manifest into the flesh. So we as saved Christians today need to be able to see as well with our spiritual eyes as we do with our physical eyes. That's right. It's important. If you can't see with your spiritual eyes, get to know the Lord. Get saved. That's the only thing that opens your spiritual eyes is salvation. That's right. Get born again. That's right. You cannot. That's why we cannot blame the sinful world for their actions. They are blind. They cannot see with their spiritual eyes. They are not held to that same standard in which we are. So this lesson today is, if you're saved, I pray that it opens up to you the way the Lord opened it up to me because I needed it. Amen. Starting in verse 15. Now as I beheld the living creatures, behold, one wheel upon the earth by the living creatures, with his four faces. The appearance of the wheels and their works was like unto the color of a barrel. Of a barrel. And they four had one likeness. And their appearance and their works was as it were a wheel Amen. in the middle, in the middle of Amen. a wheel. When they went, they went upon their four sides, and they turned not, and they went. As for their rings, they were so high that they were dreadful, and their ringing rings were full of eyes round about them four. And when the living creature went, the wheels went by them. And when the creatures stopped, were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. Whithersoever the Spirit was to go, they went thither. Was the Spirit to go. And the wheels were lifted up over against them. For the Spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. When those went, these went. When those stood, these stood. And when they were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up over against them. For the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. Dear Lord, I pray you take this message today, God, and you humble us. Yeah. Let it be you that speaks and not me, God. Let me say a word that will touch somebody's spirit for your glory, God. Be with us. Give us understanding. Anoint our minds afresh tonight in Jesus' name. The title of this lesson is, What is your will in? What is your will in? Here we are reading about Ezekiel's vision. In the Bible, there are many visions, dreams, and prophecies. I believe that each and every one should be taken literally. I don't think for one minute that if the Bible says a beast will rise out of the sea, you better be looking for one. If it says that thus saith the Lord, you better be looking for it. You better be waiting to see that with the eyes that God gives you. You better be ready in the spirit and the flesh and your life and everything that you have. But also, also in the spirit, we better be ready. Because when he says it in the flesh, he means it in the spirit also. There's something to be seen there. If it says that we should believe it, we should believe it. If it says it's going to happen, it's going to happen. This one has always stopped me, though. And you know when you read something... And you've read over it a few times, and you know that it means something. You know that it's powerful, and you keep coming back 
to him. You can't, anybody that's read the Bible does this. Uh -huh. You may cross over many, many things, and they'll mean things at the time. You know they mean something, but at that time, they didn't grab it. But then you get a hold of something. Wait a minute. And all of a sudden, you're going back through Sunday school and preaching. You go back across that verse and say, like, wait a minute. And it's like, it means something. You know it means something. Right. For an example, I'm going to tell you like this. If I told you, you know that picture's worth a thousand words. Your response would be, yes, it is, mostly. If I told you that picture's worth a thousand words. But now, if I held the picture and that picture said worth a thousand words, it would make it different, wouldn't it? Because I would be telling you that's what that picture said. Not that that picture's worth a thousand words. Do you see what I'm saying? And in God's word, it gets twofold. It walks in parables. He speaks in parables. So not only can we get it in the flesh and live this thing, we can get it in the spirit and become this thing. Uh -huh. Not just to live it in the flesh, because the flesh is going to pass away. The spirit is eternal. We've talked about that in Sunday school this morning. It's perpetual. It never ends. So God will not spend all his time trying to get your flesh right. <laughs> When it's not going to last. You've got to see what God's saying on a spiritual level so that this thing can become eternal in you and those that you lead it to. This verse was like that to me. I read it and I read it and I visually could see it even to the point, if anybody in here knows, I'm not great, I love drawing. I love to sketch, I love to paint, I love to do, that is a gift that God gave me. But not in this fullness, why? Because I don't give it enough time. But it's a gift God gave me. So I wanted to draw this thing. I told my mom, I want to paint this. I want to paint this thing with these wheels and with these eyes and with these beasts and with their wings. I want to do that. Never did. I never could get to doing that. And physical, what it was was I was wanting to see it. There was something there that needed to be seen. I thought it was with my eyes. Why? Because I'm human. Feel like you need to see something. What do you think you see it with? You think you see it with your eyes, right? But it meant more than that. It wasn't to see with my eyes. It was to see with my spiritual eyes. And when I read across it, and listen, this is important. I read it out loud. Uh -huh. I read it out loud. I let my voice read the word out loud. Out loud I read it. Not to myself. Not in my mind. Not where my children couldn't hear it. Not where my husband couldn't hear it. I read that thing out loud. And when I did, it stopped me. It grabbed me quick. Because do you know that the Spirit of God lives in you? And when you speak his word, what? Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Even us women can shout. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Do something to me. So I read it again. And I didn't look at the spell. I listened this time. Now, I want you to close your eyes for just a minute. Because I just want to read you the small part that I read. And when I heard the words, it changed me. And they four had one likeness. And their appearance and their work was as it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel. As it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Remember, you can't see the spelling now. You can't see the way the word spelled. It was a wheel within a wheel. And I said, hold on that wheel. What was you trying to show me when I was 17? Because that's when this thing started. When I was 17, when I was 19. And every time I come to this verse, I just wanted to drop it. I just wanted to paint it. God wanted to see it. Let me go to sleep and dream about this thing that Ezekiel showed. Dream about this thing that you showed to Ezekiel. But I heard it. And it was different. And God showed it to me in a way that was way better than what I was going to see it. It was way greater than I could have ever imagined with my physical eyes the thing he showed me. And I heard it and it took my breath. And it was true. Our will within his will. Our will. That thing that you desire, our want within God's want, putting our will and our desires within His, our will placed in His, so that we four, hold on a minute, it said we four, right? It said four, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, you. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, you. So that these four were as one. These four, and we're one move. The other one moved. And where one stopped, the other one stopped. Right. He went to the Father so that we two could be. These four, and I heard it. I said, oh God, it's so beautiful. But you know, they, there's no wisdom in me. There's no wisdom in you. There's only wisdom in God. Right. So when you hear something great, Amen. it's not, oh wow, I'm smart. No. It's, oh wow, what a Savior. Amen. Wow, what a Jesus. Right. You know, the, I, I, He's so lovingly. Took this old lump of clay that fails him daily. And he showed me something so beautiful. He showed me something so beautiful. And 
And if we will place our will in God fully, from what we eat, to what we pray, to what we will be, as one movement, wherever the Spirit says go, we will see God. See, we love God, but we are so busy using our will to find ourselves that we miss Him. We use our will to find out where we want to be, what we want to become, what we want to overcome, who we want to impress, who we don't want to let down, who we want to show up for, what place we need to be, we miss it. We miss them all together because that's what we're using our will for. Do you know you can only find yourself in God? You can't find you anywhere else. You can't find yourself in financial security. You can't find yourself in this church. You can't find yourself talking to Keith. You can't find yourself talking to your mother. You can only find you in God. That's the only place you can find you. That's why your journey is so difficult. That's why my journey is so difficult. So if we are to place our will in His, what would that look like? What exactly should we do? Because, you know, initially when I found this verse, it was God, I want to see what it looks like. I want to see this thing with these four wheels filled with eyes. I want to see this thing that has the face of a man, the face of all. I want to see this thing. So why not want to see this thing in the spiritual? Why not should I have that same zeal when He shows me this is a spiritual thing that I want to see? It? So I pray. And I'm still praying because this is new. <laughs> he just opened this up to me. So I'm sure my journey may be 15 years long, but it will be great in God. What do we do? First and most effective thing is to remove those things which are not in His will. It's first thing to do. Look at your life and remove those things. And for all of us, bricks. And that's the way I'm going to put this because the Lord gave it to me, so I'm going to say it. And if it's an offense, take it to God. Because I got a little offended in it myself. And I'm like, Lord, I ain't saying that. For all of us bricks who have been around since the foundation of the church, us that's been here, you know, some of us have been here 5, 10 years, some of us have been here 20, 30 years, some of us know this book from front to back. For those who say, I've done this walk forever, and this lesson is for Tim or Tommy or Jane, there's your first thing you need to remember. There's the first thing you're to. You need to remove that. If you ever think that you're so good that God can't work on you, that's right. that's you're right. so lost. That's absolutely right. I'm so lost. I've been in that place. When I come in, I'm like, I'm faithful. Now I'm coming every Sunday, every Thursday, and somebody walks in, and I'm thinking I'm high on the hallway. I'm here all the time. Oh. It was my job to walk up and hug their neck and make them feel like they were here all the time. Okay. That's the only thing that I was super more gracious enough to do. That's what I was supposed to have done. So we get that. That's I didn't want to say that. But that's what God wants to say. I want to say it. Say it. It's easy to do this because we can sit down and list out the things that don't line up with the will of God, right? You want to put your will in His, first find the things that are not in His will. Make a list. If you're like me, I like to write it down. Me and Jody, we do not do well off paper. <laughs> we like to make a list. You need to pay this bill on Friday because if we don't, guess what? We're going to forget about that bill. And we're going to struggle all week long. And God is the same way. Find your weaknesses. Sit down, make that list, name them things that you do not have lined up with the will of God. If you want to know what the will of God is, it's to work. Period. Simple as that. If you want to know what his will is, his will is to work. If it says it in here, it's what he expects. If it don't say it in here, then you're fine. That's how you know what his will is. That's the first thing you do. So, our list may sound a little bit like this. Do not lose your temper, Becky. Do not lose your temper this week. That's what you need to work on. Go to church on Thursday night service whether you have to work or not. That might be on my list. That might be on your list. Go visit the sick. Go to the hospital. Don't let the preacher man be the only one who does it. Don't let Tommy be the only one who does it. And I'm calling that out because you're worthy of the fruits that you have. That is your gift. That is your fruits of your labor. So I need to call your name out. You do those things. That matters. There's people in here who call one another. They check on one another. I feel I'm sure in that area. You need to be acknowledged. You need to feel good about the things you do in God. But that may be on your list. Visit the sick. Your list may say lose weight. Oh, no, that's not a spiritual thing. That's not a spiritual thing. We don't need to lose weight. Yes, it is. You very much look on the outside with what's going on on the inside. It's true. I, hey, I'm thick. I can say this. Hey, nobody get mad at me because I'm thick. <laughs> on your list may also say quit smoking. I was offended in that three years ago. They could preach on smoking all day long, and I would miss the bathroom. Hey, I changed that. Come on. I praise God for that. That wasn't me. That was history. But that may be on your list. Or 
Some people's list isn't as general and may sound something like this. Don't steal from mom anymore. Don't steal from mom anymore. That's what I want on my list. Don't have sex while I'm unmarried. Yeah. There's some people who that could be on the list. That's okay. We're not so self we're not so righteous. We've been there. We've done that. It's okay. We don't have that shop. It's okay. That may be on your list. Don't have sex while I'm not married. Pay my tithes. Hey, we church people, we don't admit that. There's the times I have to pay my tithes. There's also the times when my bills are met. Because God's gonna teach us. We're gonna learn. We belong to him, we're gonna learn. Punch the victory. Don't talk about Cindy or Christy or Bob. That might be on your list. Don't talk about my friends. Don't talk about the people in the church. Don't talk about people. Don't talk about people. We may also have, stop taking pills you don't need. You know what you need. You know what you don't need. Stop taking what you don't need. God understands if you have cancer. But he don't understand if you want to get high so you can clap your hands in church. He don't understand that. That's not acceptable. I can say that. I've done these things. I'm not judging. I'm judging Becky. This lesson was to me first. Remember that. He may say, don't visit the nasty sites on the computer. When your wife's in bed, when your husband's in bed, mom and daddy's in bed, don't be on that dirty side. That might be on your list. It's okay. Because if it's on that list, you know what? You acknowledge it. That's the first step to get your will in line with his. Okay. And that's okay. See, by doing this, it makes yourself look at your will and what condition it is in. A will should be connected by spokes, right? Physical will, the old time way ones, they were connected by spokes, right? They had spokes all the way around. Our will also should be connected by spokes. Each spoke is a desire in a way. Every spoke represents your desire and the way you're going to live it. Every spoke that connects you to God. The ones that do not connect are the ones that do not line up with His Word. Then your will is in Him if they line up. If not, you are unbalanced and your wheels are unbalanced. And as you turn, you will hit hard spots and soft spots. Let me explain to you how you know when you're not in God's will. One day everything's okay, next day it's fell all to pieces. That is not the way God wants it. Uh, you can't tell me for one minute. God tries you. God does not trick you on purpose. He doesn't do that. He's not that kind of God. That's not the God I serve. He doesn't make you fall on your face. You make you fall on your face. He tries you to make you stronger and stronger. And st he knows the right exact amount to put on a person that's trying so that they can become stronger in the faith. He doesn't trick you and laugh at you. Right. If you're serving that God, you're not serving my God. My God does not do that. My God is love. Amen. And my God is compassion. And my God is balance. And my God is my God. He's amazing. He's amazing. And that's not a definition of my God. It is quite moving when you're in balance. And in others, at other times, it may be clunky. And in your life, you may have those quiet moments where everything's good. And you may have those loud moments where everything's noisy. It's just not right. You know what I'm saying? This is how you know when your will needs a little repair. Because <laughs> sometimes it's quiet. But sometimes it's all loud. Think of each spoke individually. All right? Maybe this will make it a lot easier. you got the outward will, which is God. you got the spokes, which is our wills and our ways. And you got the inward circle. That's our will. You see what I'm saying? You have to purposely connect to him. So, the spoke of marriage. There's a spoke. If it's connected properly, you will honor each other. You will honor one another with the way you talk, with the way you act, with the way you treat, with the things you do. Women, oh, let me hold on a minute. A little bad to see me. Women will be submissive. Yes, you will. If you're lined up with the Word of God, you will be submissive. And that's hard to me. I'm a loud person. Look at my husband back here. He's just shaking his head. <laughs> I, I got to work on it. It's a spoke, you know? I mean, I, I can't lie. My wheel's a little loud on that side. You've got to be submissive. you got to be soft-spoken. you got to be soft-spoken. And trust me, it's the greatest gift you can give your kids. When you learn to speak soft, they'll speak soft. And what does the Bible say? It turns away wrath. Yeah, right. so, so it's a great thing to be that as us, us women in the marriage. And a man will love his wife as he does the church. There's your heavy. Amen. You will 
love your wife like Jesus loves the church. That means you'll do everything not short of dying to protect her honor. Everything not short. Now listen, I'm saying not short because Jesus died. Not short of dying to bring her worth. Everything to make her life feel worthy. Right. You would do that. Yeah. Not the fire in the bed. That's part of it. That's the thoughts. Hey, wait a minute. Yeah. You can never take another person into your bed, but if you take that wife or that husband to bed with filthy thoughts, you can follow it. Uh -huh. You better hold on. This thing's spiritual. God sees everything. Everything you think. Everything you think, he don't know you think. So, even the bed needs to be kept pure. Then it will be quiet and your living will be easy. If you speak soft to that husband, he'll work hard for you. If he works hard for you, you'll be soft on him. If you keep the bed pure, then not only your physical life, but your spiritual life will become pure. And you will carry around all the burdens that the rest of the world is carrying around right now. That's what it looks like the next spoke of marriage is in life. That's what it looks like. But, let's say the husband's cheating. Let's say every other Thursday or Friday he's out with his mistress at work. And let's say the woman is unsubmissive, loud, bossy, and overbearing. You know, common picture. Go figure. You know, I'm just being honest here. Let's say. Then that part of the wheel becomes loud and clanky. Anybody ever had their marriage? Come on now. My marriage has been rocky. You ever had your marriage in that rocky place? It's called the blood line of God. It was not lined up with God. It's going to be loud. That spoke is disconnected. So every time that wheel turns, it has no choice that goes to the other side, but you're going to be able to tell that spoke is You're going to be able to feel that thing. Just like a broken spoke sounds, so will your marriage if it is not lined up with God. However, when, however, when the marriage spoke turns, the wheel begins to walk. And that's very dangerous. That's why we have outstanding numbers of divorces. That's how, and it's not that God can't forgive you if you've been divorced. We know He forgives. You know, see and forgive. He loves us. He's not going to not forgive you if you call on Him. But why overworking? You know what I'm saying? Why overworking? Why not let Him get that thing right to start with? And this is the things we can help. All you can do is start with today. You can't start yesterday. All you can do is start with today. Also, we have the spoke of children. Everybody, mostly everybody in here has children, whether they're grown, whether they're young, makes no never mind. <clears throat> Marriage is great, but dad says, spank that child. Mama says, let's talk. Dad says, tear it up. Mama says, let's talk. Let's talk about this thing. Dad says, you need to grow up. Mama says, let's cover it up. Hey, you know, I'm just giving fire over seven because I've covered a lot of things. Jeremy said, the Lord said this. And you know what? I should have shut my mouth. The Lord did say that. He grow up a little bit. I'm learning to step out of the way. Slowly. I'll get there eventually. Right? I'm being honest. <clears throat> well, marriage may be okay. But the kids are crazy. And the spoke planks every time you go around. The couple walks in and they love one another. But you bring up the kids and it goes all the, you know, where? It doesn't, it doesn't mean anything anymore. So that may be a spoke that's broke on your will of God. You may have your marriage lined up and doing everything you're supposed to do with your marriage, but you may not have your children lined up. And if you have children, they are where you're stuck with you, one or not. I'm still hers. I'm 33, but I'm still hers. Her witness now is what keeps me in line with God. You see what I'm saying? It never changes. It never changes. As long as breath's in your body, you have many things that ties you up. We also have other spokes that connect us and make our will line up with him, such as our spoke of works. Hello. <laughs> this is my hard one. I wanted to be a Christian and sit at home and not talk to nobody. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to come to church. You see where the Lord's got me. How many of I wanted to stay right back here in that corner and never say a word. I wanted to hear Keith preach, go home, feel, you know, filled up with the word and not have to talk to nobody. But that's not the way it works. Your spoke of works includes helping those in need. Feeding the hungry. Cleaning the church. Do you know feeding the hungry and cleaning the church? They're both in the same category. They're works. They're works. It's necessary. When that lost soul walks in and sees you won't clean the floors of the church, if you don't care about the floors, how in the world are you going to care about your soul? Come on. They're, you know they're all equal in God. When you're doing something, you're doing something. God's proud of you. Also, showing up for church. 
No, just clean it. If you clean the church on Thursday and you don't show up on Sunday, it don't matter. Because you're not showing up. They got a clean church, but you're not there. Singing in the choir is a work. Choir practice is a work. Singing in the choir is a work. Choir practice is a work. Great to sing in choir. You don't show up to choir practice. You need to work on that work style. We need to. I'm just being real. Showing up for people when they need you. When they call and say, I need you, come by the house. I just need somebody to talk to you for a minute. Showing up for people. That's what Jesus done. He showed up for people when they needed it. Anytime that you read about a need, Jesus is there. We're supposed to be like him. There is a spoke of honor in this wheel that connects us to God. People think they have one, but they're so wrong. This is one that even I thought I had so the Lord started working on me, the spoke of honor. We think we have it, but we are really, really wrong. Because we say, hey, what well, is honor? When I treat people kind, when I show up for church, when I do what's right, when I cut my phone off, when I don't wear a hat in church, when I dress appropriately, these are the things that falls into the physical mind when we think of honor. But what about the vessel? What about this vessel? What about the place, we think about this, where people worship God. What about the place where God lives? We think about honoring one another when we come in and do the right things. But what about honoring Him when we do the right things with our body? Here we go. Gluttony. Laziness. Cigarettes, alcohol, pill popping, worrying, stress, lust, thinking about things you shouldn't think about, doing things you shouldn't do, not doing things you know to do. If a load of your laundry needs done, get up and do them and it'll teach your children to be clean. Amen. If your husband needs you to tell him he did a good job, even if your whole life's falling apart, you praise him for doing that good job. If you know you need to push back from the table, push back from the table. God don't want to live when you can't even get out of bed in the morning. I hurt getting up in the morning. I do. My ankles throb in the morning. God don't want to live in that. Really, come on. He don't want to live in that. And he don't want to live in that lust-filled mind who's faithful to her husband home and thinking about when she's out of the house. Who's saying they love God and then the first person that makes a mistake to her God don't want to live in that. He don't want to live in that. It's not a motel. Get out, come in. Get out, come in. He wants a permanent residence. He don't want to live in that. I don't want to live in that. He don't want to live in that, people. We're killing the church with this honor. We're killing that spoke with this honor. And it is almost non-existent. It's walking around. It's been walking around for years. It's almost not even there anymore. Because we don't realize that it starts with us. That honor starts in us. Now, we may at this point be able to say, I have all of those. And all I have is one spoke, not connected. And I'm fine. My wheel's turning just fine. I barely have any noise. I'm not broken. But that's why it is a wheel within a wheel. It must line up completely. <coughs> Even one thing can tear your wheel all to pieces. Even one of those things. If you got it all right, I'm really not even being sarcastic here. I, hats off to you. Because you worked. There's some people who have worked in this way. There's some people who really get on their knees every night and pray out loud in front of their children. There's people who lay their hands on their babies when they're sick. There's people who believe until it hurts. So I'm not going to laugh about that. Because if you really do have a lot of this right, I'm going to watch you. And I'm going to be watching you. There's a lot of people who do have it right. And I'm watching you. And I'm watching your fruits. And you're leading me. You don't even realize that you're leading me. You may have one thing right, that one thing I'm watching. You may have ten things right, that ten things I'm watching. So hats off to you on that. But if one thing is disconnected, you need to work on that thing. Because of this. If your, your connection with your children is broken, for example, I'm going to do this in a real kind of way. Me and Jody don't agree on raising our kids, which is untrue. We, we do agree on most things. But let's say we don't. Let's say he wants to be hard and I want to be easy. And we don't agree on that thing. That is going to flat until it breaks our marriage. Then I got two spokes. Here I am, my kids ain't listening, and my marriage is falling apart. And then that's going to flap. And my marriage is falling apart, so I don't want to come to church, you guys, because we've been coming to church so long together, it makes it awkward. 
So one of us is going to quit the church, right? Because only one of us can stay. We know the rules of religion. So now here it is. My children are lost. My marriage is lost. And I've lost my church. It sets the divide in my spirit, so I go back to my old ways. I need to be comfortable somewhere, right? I need somebody to love me, right? He needs somebody to love him, right? So here we are. We're back there, which sends us back into disease and turmoil because we're drunk for the next 20 years and our liver's damaged. Because here we are. I mean, it's just it's true. It's true. Here I am with liver damage and I die. And you think that's the end? No, that's not the end. The next generation is lost. And the next generation is lost. And the next generation is lost. Because my great, great, great grandchildren will not try because I couldn't get my own will together. <laughs> they won't be able to move. Because I can teach them to move. And if they do, do you know how hard that walk's going to be for them? Because I did nothing to teach them. I did nothing to teach them. I said, oh, it's just a little spoke. It's just a little spoke that I don't go to church on Thursday nights. It's just a little spoke that I'm not dedicated to the things that I say God called me to in front of my children. I tell them I'm dedicated and I don't show up here and teach. That's well, just a little spoke. No, it's not. It is the beginning of the break of the will for God's. It is the beginning. So yes, every spoke needs to be connected. But the good news is, when they are, you will move when the Spirit says move. When you do get them connected, you don't have to do anything. You get that. When you're doing everything God wants you to do, that's all you have to do. You don't have to do it in excess. God don't expect you to run until your bones break. Everybody's got this deluded way of thinking. Your old mom and dad says when it's time to rest, we're going to rest. God knows when you need rest. But when you're lined up with him, when the Spirit says move, you'll just move. When the Spirit says go, you'll just go. That's right. You will be full of eyes, seeing in all things. Because you read this chapter, it tells you that the wheel was filled with eyes on the outside and filled with eyes on the inside. So you wonder why eyes. If your life's lined up with the will of God, will you not see right? You'll see all things. You'll see God's will, which sees past and he sees future. Does this mean your life will be perfect? No. Jesus' will was the cross. Don't know what you will be. But you do know this. Whatever it is, it'll be worth it. Was his will worth it? Was his will worth it? And he died a hard death that he didn't deserve. But his will was worth it. And his father provided to the day the life was took out of his body. And the minute the life was took out of his body and his journey was done, he was with his father. And you have that same promise. You have that same promise. And our will may bring another to heaven. How about that? How about your will might bring Without even turning, because it says that it, had, it tur didn't turn. <laughs> it didn't move. It didn't have to. It was what it was supposed to be. Your will, leaving this life of God, may bring your children. And there's some mothers in here that worry about their kids. Yeah, you know what? You may have lived your life rough. You may have not did what God told you to do, but you're doing it now. And that will that you placed in God give you promises beyond what you could ever do. Amen. It gives you promises beyond what you can ever measure, and you may never see it. Jesus is not physically in the body to watch us come to him today, but he sees it. You may not physically be in the body when that son or daughter falls on his knees, but you will know it. You will know it. Why? Because the word says it. It's yours. It's your cross. So today, look at yourself and see what is not connected. Is it the way you talk? Is it the way you're, is, is it our habits? Is it the way we love? Is it our faith? Is it our weight? This physical thing is still here. You know, it really is. Is it our attitudes? Whatever it is, connect it by prayer and begin to grab God. Begin to grab God with those spokes. Find what it is and grab God with those spokes. Don't wait. Don't wait. Do it now. Speak sweet, quiet, or don't speak at all. If it's your talk that needs to be fixed. If it's your habits, give it up one hour at a time. Don't, you don't have to feel like you have to do it all by yourself because some of this stuff's bigger than us. One hour. Give one hour a day. And when you give that hour, you say, God, I'm not going to take these pills today. God, I'm not going to smoke pot today. God, I'm not going to watch pornography today. I'm giving this hour to you because, God, I'm weak. And you like, don't waste that hour. Don't eat Big Macs and watch TV that hour. Pray. Pray. Because you got a demon that needs to move. Pray. When you give up that pill, get on your knees. Who cares what the world thinks about you? They're talking worse about you. You get high. Give him one hour. If you can't do 
even that give him 20 minutes. 20 minutes is your life better than none. He can do a whole lot in 20 minutes. And if it is your attitude, delete it with mercy. If you have a bad attitude, delete that thing with mercy. Let me tell you how to do this. When I quit smoking, I said this. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Because that cigarette took my money. It took my time. It took my energy. Honest to God, I would pick the cigarette out from underneath the porch and smoke it. Didn't care who touched it. I'm mean, being honest with you. If I'd have been two or three days, I'd have pulled the bucks out of the yard. Thou shalt have no other God before me. None. That cigarette would become my God. And God give me that word to speak to that cigarette. So every time I wanted it, I said, Thou shalt not have any other gods before me. And all of a sudden, that spirit raised up in me because I grabbed a hold of his will. And it wasn't me. It wasn't oh. me that stopped picking up that cigarette. It was the word of God that spoke to that demon and it couldn't keep it doing that. It had no power in that moment. And I had to say that sometimes a hundred times a day. And sometimes I had good days and I said it once or twice. But still to this day, if it crosses my mind, you know I'll tell it. And if you're in that place where your attitude stinks, recite this. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them. Every time you want to get mad at your kids and say something nasty. Every time you want to get mad at that husband and say something nasty. Every time you want to judge somebody, say it out loud. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And those words that Jesus spoke while his body was dying on that cross for you and shut you up in the big ball, there ain't no hope for it. If it won't, if the word of God can't change you, there ain't no hope for it. Recite that to yourself. Say that to yourself. Humble yourself in what he does. Humble yourself by grabbing a hold of his will. We're not perfect. But that's what he's working on. He's working on getting us to his perfection, maturity in God. Upon each spoke that you prepare becomes strength. And in each one that you line up with God becomes eyes. You know, we've had some broken spokes that brought some eyes. There's some hindsight 2020, which God I've never done that. How about having some foresight? How about grabbing a hold of that thing before it becomes hindsight? How about grabbing a hold of that thing and seeing what God can give you in the future? He can show you what will happen. If you're, there's some things you're doing right now that you realize when you did it right, I'm not going to put you in there, right? Right? There's some things you're doing right now you never give up. Your life wouldn't be the same without the world. Do that in every spoke, grab a hold of it. Our will and put our will in His so that we can be moved from this wretched place. So that you can be moved from this place of misery. Moved from all the words of untruths that have been spoken about us. Has somebody said something untrue about you? Have you said something untrue about you? You know if you said you're unworthy, you're a liar. You know if you said you're unloved, you're a liar. If you said you had no father, you're a liar. He is a father to the fatherless. He loves the unlovable. He has saved the unrighteous. Come on. The word, these broken spokes have taken away your truths. Grab a hold of them so you can get it back. And move from your failures. And move away from your past. Knowing that thus saith the Lord, you are loved. Thus saith the Lord, you are loved. You're loved. Even when you don't love yourself. You are loved. You are an overcomer. You are already victorious. You are His. He desires you. You have a Father. And we can say this when we grab a hold of Jesus. When we grab a hold of His will. That's when we can say it. That's when we'll know it. You don't know it till you test the waters. Try it. I heard that at a funeral of the pastor that I love. The man stood up and said, the greatest thing he ever did for me. He didn't preach. He said, barely, barely said the Lord every Sunday. He did. I know I was raised under him. Then he said, try it. Try it. You're going to try drugs. You're going to try women and men. You're going to try the club. Try Jesus. Grab out a hold of Grab out and get a hold of him and try him. Put your will in his. Put one thing. Take one thing. Take whatever you think is the easiest thing for you to give up. And take and get in this word and put your will in his will and watch. Watch. He won't let you down. He won't. He'll prepare that thing. So I ask you in closing, where is your will? If it's not moving 
And if it's stuck in mud, despair, and stuck down in the clay of that old you, if you just can't get out of who you are, if you're stuck inside of that place and your spokes are broken and you are tore all to pieces, reach up. Reach up with what you know. And I'm not asking you to do anything you don't know how to do. If all you know how to do is pray down or lay me down to sleep, do it. If all you know is, Lord, forgive me for I have sinned, do it. Amen. Start doing it. Grab a hold of that. Line that up. And that'll be one spoke in your will connected to this. And you'll be able to see what it is that you're supposed to do. And you know what that eye does? It opens it up so you can get another spoke fixed. And when you fix that, then you get another spoke fixed. And you know what? Ten years from now, you don't even recognize yourself. You don't even know who you are. I don't know who I am. I have no clue who I am. And you know what? That excites me. Because I didn't like who I was. I didn't like how I felt. I didn't like how I treated people. I didn't like that old religious sinner. But I don't know how to put it. I was everything that what I was supposed to be. But I want my will in his. And right now my will is plain and loud. You probably wouldn't even want to try to sit on anything that was pulling me. Because they probably fell off. But I'm working on it. And I'm going to keep working on it. I know some things. I know some things now. God wants to live in a good house. He wants to live in a good house. He wants to live in a house where he has a permanent residence. He wants to live in a house where he can kick out every time I get a whim to do something. He wants to live in a house that feels like getting up in the mornings. He wants to live, live in a house that gets up even when she don't feel like it. He wants to live in a house that comes to the church on Sunday. He wants to live in a house that cares about what she puts in her body. It cares about what comes out of her body. He wants my will in his will because he wants to move me. Where does he want to move me? Into eternity. He wants to move me into eternity. And he wants to move me into eternity now. He wants to move me in his ways now. So that the ones that are watching will desire to move. So that when I look back and my eyes close on this side, I will see Destiny. I will see Dynasty. I will see Miranda. I will see Elijah coming into their calling. I will see them serving God. I will see them putting their will in God. Because you know what? If mama don't do it, they ain't going to want it. Why? Because they love you. Somebody loves you. If you don't want to put your will in his for you, put your will in his for them. Preserve your people. Preserve your seed. Do what God called you to do. If you call yourself by his name, put your will in his will. Ezekiel saw way more that day than a physical will. He saw way more that day than a physical will. And it may have been nothing but for my little simple mind that it has blessed me. And I pray today it's blessed you. And I pray today it's usable to be doers of this faith. And I thank you again. If all hearts are clear, that's all I give you tonight.